I got the Scully on. It feel like November out here, man. Be like Monster on Boys in the Hood. Yo, hurry this shit up, man. It's colder than the motherfucker out here. <laughs> yeah. We gonna talk. We gonna get a little bit more in depth with this situation, with this loss of Devin Haney last night, man. Um, this, there's, some, there's some things I want to touch on. And there's going to be some things in this video that a lot of people may not like to hear uh, about their favorite fighters. Mainly Tank, Devontae Davis, and Devin Haney mainly is the focal point of this video here, man. Because I want to clarify some things regarding how I feel about it as well. And, uh, you know, what I think, who's to blame for Devin's loss last night. And uh, some of the pro, the super extreme Devin Haney fan channels on how they are hypocrites. You know, and, I, and, I, and I, I caught something last night that I'm going to mention. Okay, so look, first things first, we already know Devin Haney lost in an upset against Ryan Garcia. Uh, his belt wasn't on the line because uh, Ryan Garcia failed to make weight, came in three pounds heavier than he was supposed to for a 140 title fight. And that is his fault for being undisciplined, you know, from far as we can see, right? But then when you think about it, um, I don't think the goal was for Ryan to even get the belt. I don't think he cared about the belt. I think it was more, I guess it was personal. He wanted to get in there and fight and probably punish Devin Haney. And um, coupled with Floyd Mayweather's, his hands are all over this this sabotage so to speak as well when it comes to like the, the events leading up to the fight a lot of those antics and stuff hurt I believe those probably ended up hurting the sales and all of that was done and orchestrated by Floyd Mayweather man from the sparring footage to the situation all of the antics that Ryan was putting up putting out there all of that had Floyd Floyd was in that man trust me but the loss. Let's talk about that real quick. Devin Haney's losing. First of all, man, losses don't matter to me. Um, some of the greatest that ever laced them up have lost fights. It's never about a loss with me, man. I, th I think when fighters get losses on their records, it makes them more battle-hardened and battle-tested. And it also, um, especially when they bounce back from it, I love that. That shows the real champion spirit. So if anything good comes out of this, um, is that Devin gained of he gained some experience as far as getting his chin really tested and facing a lot of adversity um, you know we, we say we wanted him to face adversity one day we say we wanted him to get his chin tested that's what happened he got his chin tested he faced some knockdowns got right back up showed the um, warrior spirit and it showed us a lot about Devin Haney last night um, now, then there's there's talk of his chin, okay? His chin. His chin might be a little funny style, bro. And I know a lot of people might, might not want to hear this. It might be a little weak, man. I don't, th I don't think his chin is really that good, bro. I'm not sure if it's really that good. The others that defend, that that, that are, are super Haney fans, they'll say, well, he kept getting back up. It's not about him getting back up. It's because you get... Now, let me say this. Just because you got a chin don't mean you can't get knocked out. That's one thing. Um, number two, Devin Haney getting back up. Um, it's not about him getting back up to show that he has a chin. It's about the initial punch to me. And when Ryan clipped him in the second round, on the, in the first round, first off, I didn't like that. I didn't like how he responded. He was wobbly. Okay? He was all over the place. Or for one punch. And... This is a C-class fighter that everybody say Ryan Garcia is a C-class fighter. Devin Haney and his team himself have called Ryan Garcia a C-level fighter. So how, and then they call themselves an A-level fighter. How do you let a C-level fighter wobble you that early in a fight if you're an A-class fighter? Just saying. Not saying Devin ain't an A-class fighter. That doesn't, you know, that that's to me, that that's telling me um, his, his IQ is in his... Big as big as everybody thought it was, because if you're saying he's a C class fighter and you let a C class fight do you like that in the first round, what that say about you? Just keeping it real. Listen, 
This is coming from a Devin Haney guy. You know I love Devin Haney. I love the sweet science. I love watching him box. I like how he move around in the ring. I love his jab, everything. Okay? But let's just call it how it is, man. Um, his chin might be suspect, bro. Off of that alone. And then all the subsequent punches. He never he never um, regained his footing. He he he, he caught us a, a, a good run between like I think the, the second, third, fourth, like right there before the second half of the fight. He started doing some boxing. He started um, using his jab, and then he did rock Ryan Garcia. I forgot what round it was. It looked like he did stumble him a little bit. Either that or Ryan was faking it. I don't know. But Ryan, he weathered it too. Ryan showed that he had a chin against Tank. Because when Ryan got dropped by Tank, he regained himself. He regained him footage. I mean, his, 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 he, he regained his, his balance, everything like that. I think Devin, when he got rocked, he didn't even get dropped by Ryan at first. He was never the same again, I don't think, man. And then all those knockdowns, seventh round, and I think the tenth, that started doing more damage. I think he broke um, Devin Haney's jaw. You know what I'm saying? So, um, through it all, he fought through it. You got to give Devin his respect. But who do I blame for this loss, man? Um, there's nobody to really blame. This, kind of, this type of stuff happens in boxing. But if you're going to really put a blame on the way Devin fought, you got to blame them. Because they said they was going to go in there and knock Ryan out. They said they was going to step to him. They said they was going to bang with him in the middle of the ring. A lot of people were saying that probably is not a good idea, man. Devin Haney is not built for that kind of war, bro. Devin Haney's chin. Look at his... You see Tank? Look at Tank's chin. Look at his head. Look at look at um, Esau Cruz's head. He got that block chin. Tank got a, pit, got a big head, a wide fucking dense head. Devin Haney ain't like that. Devin Haney has more of a, 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 a you know, slender face. And he can't... It look like he can't really absorb a lot of that kind of stuff, man. Coming from... Ryan Garcia has one of those solid round ass faces too. So when you got a, a rock head most of the time, you got a good solid chin on you most of the time. Just saying. Um, Devin Haney is not designed for power. He's not designed to to stand there and bang in the pocket with a fighter, man, that has more punching power than him. That might work against somebody like a um um like a, maybe an Arnold Barboza or somebody like a, uh, that can't, that don't really have a lot of punching power. I don't even think he could stand there and bang with Shakur Stevenson like that, man. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Shakur has much better inside game. I've been saying that I don't think Devin Haney has good inside game. I've been saying this before this fight. He has to develop his inside game. You never, I don't, I don't never see him pr practicing that. You know what I mean? Uh, that's, that's another part of a game i think that's what makes you an all around well-rounded fighter is if you know how to employ inside work because it might be a time in your fight where you might come across a fighter that he want to bring it to you you want to keep it in your pocket in your chest and you can't keep running from him or you can't keep it might be a time when you get tired right it might be a time when your footwork fails you you know you get tired you can't move your legs as much now you got to stand there for a little bit to get some more, you know, get get some energy back, and you gotta you gotta bang in the pocket a little bit. How you gonna do that if, if you got somebody that's a big puncher or whatever, whoever, and you don't know how to employ? I never seen Dev really sit there and work good on the inside. The closest I saw was Lomachenko, and it was spotty. You know, um, just saying, bro. This no. Listen. They wanted to fight like that. Now, all of the him, the Subriel Matias, the Javante Davis stuff, man, I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. I'm very, it's questionable. Let's not talk about Subriel Matias right now. Devin's f major flaws, uh, his defense is a little, is very spotty. I've said this many times. As good as his footwork is, his defense is spotty. Um, His his chin, I never really was, I was trying to give everybody the benefit of the doubt when it come to his chin. You know, maybe Ryan punches just that hard, but my thing is this. Um, 
he never regained it. You know, he, he couldn't gain his footing back, bro. Them punches must have really been tearing him up. To Devin's credit, he kept getting up. But he was shaky. Every time he got up, his legs was gone, bro. He can't, It got worse and worse, bro. So that's them. I wish they stopped marketing Devin Haney as this knockout dude. Stop saying that shit, man. This is no slight to Bill Haney. He's a good promoter. He's supposed to promote his son. But they got to figure another way to reinvent this kid, man. They can't talk up, tout him as this dude that's going in the ring, clapping shit, um, putting in pain and all that, because that's not what he's doing. He's not doing that. So we can't sit up there and pretend no more, bro. That's why I said they should have never been trying to tell him as this, yo, I'm going to step on. And Devin do it too. Like, yeah, I'm going to step on Ryan. I'm going to show everybody how he a uh, C-level fighter. I'm going to get him. I'm, I'm, I'm going to knock him out. He said this on numerous occasions in certain fights, and he didn't get the knockout. He got to stop doing that. Because after a while, the public will be like, wait a minute. You said you was going to get a knockout. You ain't do it. And it's not even that. Sometimes you can say you're going to get a knockout, and then you can go in there and try, and the public can look at it like, all right, at least he did try. It's almost like Devin, he didn't know what to do. He was standing there, especially at the end of the round, he was standing there doing this, and he wasn't letting his hands go. I'm like, wait a minute, it's not, it's not a person that want to get knockouts. That's what a person that want to get knockouts do. He's standing there, and he pulls up. I think Ryan Garcia, though, was out there to exp try to expose Devin and try to... F he was letting the world know I can hurt Devin whenever I feel like in this fight. That's what he was doing, bro. He was pretty much playing with him in there, bro. This is supposed to be an A-class fighter. He was in there playing with him. And he he kept shelling up all that shit he was doing, that goofy shit. That was on purpose. He was he was trying to show everybody, look, I can outbox, I can move around. And then when every time Ryan planted his feet, he was a problem for Dev. All them flurries. Devin could not trade with him. He couldn't, he couldn't, he didn't have the same or equal or close to the same firepower that, that Ryan Garcia had. He couldn't do it. If you go back and watch Tank and Ryan, and they was trading a few times, Tank was dealing with his power a little bit better. Tank never, you know, he cracked Tank a couple of times. Tank was on the back foot and was countering. All right. And um, you were expecting Devin to do that. You were expecting that from Devin. So you got to give him a little credit for wanting to stand in the pocket with Ryan Garcia, even though he's not built for that. But he fought somebody else's fight. He didn't fight his fight. You know, it's like it's weird because I'll say this too about the boxing public, man. Very weird and fickle people. Like, if Devin don't fight in the pocket, let's say he's a born fighter, right? And then when he fight in the pocket... And get beat up. Now he's exposed, or he ain't he ain't got no chin. That might be true, but you guys were saying Devin was boring. You guys were saying he don't want to stand there and fight. That's why nobody don't watch his fights because his fight's not gonna sell because he's not gonna stand there and fight. The minute he stand there and fight, and then he don't look good because that's not his thing. Like I've been telling everybody. Oh, man, look at what Ryan doing to him. He let a C-class fighter beat him up. And come on, man. I mean, when has Devin ever showed you he had good inside game, man? This is not a fucking surprise, bro. Y'all can't have this shit both ways, man. Now, as far as the pro Devin Haney channels and stuff, something that I want to point out, man. Um, One other thing before I get into that. A lot, of, a lot of Tank fans, oh, I'm, I'm going to get on them real quick. They they think since Devin lost that we should give Tank Davis credit for being Ryan Garcia. No, absolutely not. He still gets no credit from me because he still did drain Ryan Garcia. He didn't fight a full potential Ryan Garcia. So he's not getting his. He's not getting that love and respect from me. If he would have fought Ryan at 140 square, I would have gave him his props, but he didn't do that. Tank himself said, you crazy? You see how big he is? I ain't, you gotta be stupid to not put a rehydration clause on him. These were the words of Tank Davis, man. Devin Haney, though, he decided to go in there, fight with no rehydration clause, a fully, a full weight Ryan Garcia, knowing that that could have been a problem for him because his power, he didn't care. And then, 
On top of that, Ryan came in three pounds heavier than supposed to, and Devin still didn't care. So, miss me with that. Tanks don't get no credit from me at all for that Ryan win. Another thing is, Tank Davis, um, he's now touted as this, yo, you know, did you see what he did? With, did you see how Tank handled Ryan? It, Stop. We already know why he did that. Most likely, you can give you can say Tank is skillful for what he is, but if you're skillful, you shouldn't have to drain fighters. I'm gonna say it again. If you A class, if Tank is A class, he shouldn't have had to drain a fighter, right? Why drain somebody that only got a left hook? Just beat him up at 140. A, a weight class, you already fought him. All right. Now, to the Devin Haney. Um, super fanboys and for the tank super fanboys. Let me say this, man. Since Devin lost this fight, now you got the super fanboys of Devin is saying, yo, uh, Ryan Garcia was a weight cheat. He came in heavy on purpose to do that to Devin Haney. Now we talking about weight, but wait a minute. You guys said tank was scared to fight Devin at 140. Five pounds. You said it's no big deal. Why 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 not just fight him at five pounds? What's the difference? But now all of a sudden that Devin lost to a Ryan that was three pounds overweight on the scales. Now you you blaming it on Ryan weight? So just because your guy lost, now you now the weight is a factor. But it wasn't a factor when Tank didn't want to move up and fight Dev. Y'all had a problem with that. So if Tank would have fought Dev at 140, right, and lost to Devin, if Tank team would have been like, yo, Dev was too heavy in the ring, y'all would have been slaughtering Tank and them, right? Y'all would have been slaughtering them. So what's the fucking difference now that Ryan came in at three pounds? Now all of a sudden, Ryan was too heavy? Stop, bro. Don't do that. Because they was going to all rehydrate anyway. Ryan was going to be heavier than 143. He was heavier than that. Did 143 last night anyway. A lot of people argue that Devin was bigger. I didn't see it. It looked like Ryan was bigger. But the point is, y'all said, um, we already know re he, they're going to all rehydrate. So what difference does it make that Ryan Garcia weighed in three pounds heavier, man? He was going to be heavier than 143 when they get in the ring anyway. So is Devin. So what's the damn difference? I caught that. I'm like, oh, I see what it is. They was giving Tank all kind of hell. Deserved, too. Now, that don't let Tank off the hook. Tank should have fought Devin at a rightful weight, the way Dev fought Ryan at a rightful weight. Tank was being a coward. Didn't want to fight Dev at 140. Wanted to drain Dev like he did Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia was drained against Tank. And y'all was, was saying, you know, Y'all didn't give Tank his credit. And I don't either. I agree with that part. But like I said, you can't fault, you can't be mad at Tank. Now, now they can't be mad at Tank for not wanting to fight Dev at 140 because y'all up here mad at Ryan because Ryan was only three pounds of a fucking weight during the weigh-in when, again, he was going to rehydrate anyway. Y'all said the same thing about Tank. Yo, why Tank worrying about five pounds? He going to rehydrate just like Devin is. Correct. So is Ryan Garcia. He wasn't 143 in that ring. He was heavy. He was like, what? Like 170 or 160 something? And shouldn't y'all be happy? Dev still got his belt, right? All right. He still got his belt. That's Ryan dumbass fault for not, for not making weight, being disciplined. But I'm going to say it again. I don't think it was about making weight. I just think Ryan didn't want to, um, he didn't care about the belt, bro. I just think he wanted to get in there and fight Devin, man. And... I think, to be honest, bro, um, was Devin Haney exposed? I don't even know what to call that. I don't think I want to call that exposed because Devin still went through the storm, son. He still decided to do something that Tank ain't doing. He decided to go in there and put it all on the line, knowing he, he don't have the punching power, knowing he might not have that chin. And he still did it over somebody that has a pretty good chin. It has really good punching power. 
So he kind of like low key exposed Tank Davis still, bro. By 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 going through all of the shit he went through last night, getting his jaw broken, um, potentially getting knocked down numerous times. You gotta give Dev some kind of credit, man. At the same time, you gotta fault them for that loss too, for not sticking to their script. Um, and sometimes, man, it's the you know I guess they fairly figured, look, if we want if we want Dev to be fan friendly, we gonna have to take some risks. Maybe that's what it was, but. In order to do that, man, you got to you gotta be battle ready for that shit. And I don't think Devin is really ready. He's not ready for no heavy-handed dudes. But he didn't backpedal. He took those lumps. He fought. And he gave it He gave it everything he could. You can't take that from Devin Haney, bro. And I ain't going to do that here. I look at things different from other people. I caught on to the bullshit that Devin, the Devin, um, the Devin um, sexuals was doing. I caught on to the shit, the tank sexuals, the tank of maniacs, whatever you want to call them. I caught on to they bullshit. Both sides is full of shit. Both of them. Both sides full of shit. And then even Coach Kenny. He he's saying he's saying that Ryan he did the, the overweight shit. But then he's still saying, you know, Dev, you know, he ain't got the power, he ain't got the fire. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, cool. And then turn around and say, yeah, a rematch, you know, as long as it's that lightweight. You, you see what I'm saying? So they they still scared to fight the dude at, at 140. Come on, man. This shit is a circus, man. It's a circus from both ends, bro. Just my take. Let me know what you think, man. It's your boy, Rebel Life Boxing. Drop them comments and talk to me. I'll catch y'all later on the next one.